Okay, we start the market talk. So, uh, I I think is this is the end of hire for longer, and the the because of that narrative, the stage is set for a traditional uh, Santa rally in the US, and I think it will follow up here also. Uh, in 2023, this year, the markets have braved wars in Ukraine, Middle East, Cold War between world's two biggest economies, sluggish growth, slowing trade, volatile oil prices, high interest rates, tightening liquidity, meltdown in China's property sector, and climate climate change. So, loss, a long list of things that could have gone wrong. If the markets can weather all these issues and where we are, then I think people will feel that we can take any negative news. So this week, the market rejoiced as U.S. inflation uh, for October came in slightly lower than expected, leading the market to swiftly conclude that the peak in the Fed's policy rate has been reached, and cuts are expected in 2024. Maybe by May June, people are expecting cuts. So uh, fall in inflation in the U.S. confirms the view that inflation and interest rates are headed lower, and leading to rally in bond and equity markets. The Scramble for buying bonds led to rise in bond prices and a slide in yields. It's very important to understand that. As CPI numbers came in lower than expectations, it led to fall in US 10 year yields, dollar index, dollar index, and US equity is shorter. So the dollar index is inversely proportional to the strength in the emerging economies. For India, the weaker dollar crude prices is a big positive and should lead to. Uh, subsequently, once this politics is sorted out, to F FPI flows to India. Over the long term, interest rates are expected to remain relatively high thanks to higher fiscal deficits, higher investment because of climate change and defense requirements. So, it is not uh, that of zero interest rate in the Europe and uh, Western region is not happening very soon now. So maybe they may remain at 3-4% uh, or 2-3%, but they are going down. So in the transition to greener production and more resilient supply chain for strategic goods, more public and private investment will be required over the next decade. So that will entail more borrowing. And more borrowing means if the money is less, then higher interest rate. So it increases the demand for capital. That would put upward pressure on interest rates and cost of capital. Uh, commodity demand should fall along with weakening global economy. So, if the uh, basic idea is that the global economy is going to is going to be weak, then oil prices, uh, all the metal prices should fall. Bond prices uh, should benefit when interest rates start coming down. So, <laughs> we must know that bond yields and bond prices are in, uh, inversely proportional. So, this is the right time to get into medium oblique uh, long term. <coughs> bonds. Uh, outlook for commodities also depend on China, where expectations of long-term growth are gloomy. India is a, a bright spot in the global economy, and uh, it's and there is no other main, major economy that has the potential to deliver six percent plus real economic growth while having macro stability. FPIs including flows on account of inclusion of Indian government, government bonds in global bond index and domestic investment flows coupled with overall healthy balance sheet should gradually bring down the cost of capital in the country. So this is a time to, as I brought out, to invest in Indian bonds as RBI may commence easing cycle next year. Buyant government revenues aid the moderation in fiscal deficit, FCI flows into Indian bonds will provide an additional nudge to lower yields as there would be abundant, abundant amount of uh, demand for the government securities. Indian equities continue to benefit from household flows. That is very evident from the inflows of uh, in small and mid-cap uh, mid uh, funds. Options. Uh, with small premiums and lot sizes allow a trader to take a position for a few thousand rupees and if he is right, he can get a multi-bagger in a single day and this is what is driving the uh, markets nowadays. Derivative volumes are nearly 400 times cash trading volumes and exchanges are announcing new indices starting uh, weekly expiries and now BSE has also attained around 12% of derivative volume so that is the reason why the BSE stock is also flying. 
but this is what i have said, said till now is the consensus expectation and any deviation from here will trigger a reaction in the markets so this is what is priced in what i have covered till now this is priced in beyond that if takes things change then you will see a correction now talking about few stock ashok leland a solid product lineup and expanded market uh, expanding market share positions it favorably in the market operating margins benefited from combination of operating leverage and decline in raw material costs q2 fy24 10% year on year volume growth we saw ebitda margins were up 470 basis points medium and heavy commercial vehicle segment will spearhead the growth in coming years due to demand from construction mining and infra infrastructure their market share is roughly around 32% and lcv and bus segment is also uh, doing well first set first batch of <coughs> electric uh, uh, lcvs <coughs> excuse me first batch of electric uh, vehicle lcvs is expected to be delivered in q4 fy24 <coughs> though its subsidiary uh, switch mobility like uk ev uh is also uh, doing well eps expected is fy25 is around 9 to 9.3 so it is at roughly 18 to 20 times right now so 170 180 should be the decent level aisha uh, saw a pent up demand for motorcycles growing preference for premium bikes and increasing momentum in export demand uh, makes the company's prospects very promising the re volumes were up 12.8% year on year in this quarter cv commercial vehicles volumes were up 4.6% ebitda margins for uh, royal enfield is up 305 basis points and cv is up 196 basis point new meteor hunter 350 new classic models they are all doing well they have entered brazil market and aligns with the stark future sl for electric motorcycles uh, is uh, is also working so that they want to export these electric bikes uh, there is a broker brokerage which has given a sotp sotp valuations of roughly around 4150 for uh, based on fi25 earning and that is why if you see based on this broker uh, uh, recommendation the aisha stock was on fire in the last uh, week plus and it has gone up from around 3 300 Uh, 3,300 levels to now roughly around 3,900 levels. So it is on right now on fire and above all the basic move, moving averages. <coughs> Talking about uh, talking about uh, uh, this thing, ten-year uh, uh, US ten-year yield. Uh, sorry, I am having actually hot water because the throat is slightly bad. Okay, U.S. ten-year uh, yields. If you see, it has started falling. So, if you see, if you see the uh, uh, the Fibonacci retracement levels, it is somewhere close to thirty-eight point two percent retracement level, which is around four point three five and odd. It can fall to around four point one five, four point one two five. That is fifty percent retracement levels uh, in this uh, fall, and If you see the rising trend line here, it has now come below the uh, rising trend line, so it is expected to uh, fall uh, further. Hence, uh, uh, there, there is a possibility that this decline may continue for some more time, and uh, which will all, only benefit the equities. The Brent crude again, it is also corrected, and now it is corrected below eighty dollars. so which is positive and which is driving the equities a uh, us dollar index is also corrected and now it is around at 103 below the 20 and 50 ema and uh, looking weaker and is likely to go down further gold uh, it had a rise to around 2000 but generally it corrects from these 2000 levels so in case there is stability then the gold is expected to fall so but it's not likely to go much higher from here Dow Jones, uh, it took support at the rising trend line, and now it has broken above the 20 EMA. If you see, this is a weekly chart. 
So they had three uh, green uh, candles, that is three green wigs, and this is what is reflected in the performance of the balance of the world markets also. S and P 500. This is a daily chart. So it uh, it is now it took support at around 4100 levels, and now it is rising, and it is likely to again head towards its all-time high of around 4600. 4, and uh, this is what is actually uh, reflects or correlated to the Indian equities also. Now here is Indian 10-year yield. Uh, this is a weekly chart. Uh, this again is a declining trend line and it has fallen from there. And this is the top uh, which was made in May when the uh, interest rates started rising. So after that, even if the interest rates have gone up by roughly 200 basis points, but the yields have not gone up. It dipped on the on the noise or on the, on the news on... Uh, inclusion of uh, Indian bonds in the global bond index indices. But then it subsequently went up when there was a talk about RBI maybe keeping the rates higher or uh, raising rates or inflation and all those issues. But now it is it is trending downward. So it is expected to go down and it will go down to seven odd percent and that will reduce the cost of borrowing. A USD INR uh, is steady and it is at around 83.22, but uh, its point to see is that, you see, in the last uh, two to three years, it has from 70 odd levels, it has gone to now 83. And this is what is uh, this depreciation of currency is the one which drives the uh, FPIs out of the country because uh, uh, even if the stocks don't move, they, they start, they keep losing money. This is uh, Nifty 50 weekly chart. So if you see, uh, this was the, uh, that is around 18, 800 odd levels. This was the earlier tops. And Nifty has been able to defend that. And this, if, if it trades above these levels, it should be good. And it again, like the US uh, markets, we've also had the three uh, <coughs> green candles. And... Uh, uh, and expected to do well. So uh, I think this should be the level, uh, 18,800 should be the level uh, which should be taken as, a, again, if it is uh, tested, it should be again taken as a level to buy in uh, this thing, large numbers, any equities. This is the daily chart. So if you see, uh, uh, it tested the 200 day, 200 EMA in October and bounced from there and now it is rising. It had few gap ups. Then it dipped below the 50 EMA but now it is safely above that level and it faced resistance uh, I'll show you in the next chart uh, and it halted at around 18, 19,850 but uh, which was the previous uh, uh, top of the previous high but in case it clears these levels then it will head to those 20,200 levels. Here, if you see Nifty 50 one day, uh, it took support at 200 EMA, as I told, went up. It is facing resistance at the previous stop of around 19,850. And once it has to clear this, then it will head towards the previous high of 20,200. But that is inevitable. And I think in December, it should be able to go at these levels. So uh, the point is uh, remain invested. The option chain of the Nifty, you see there is put writing at 500, 700, 600 every level. <coughs> so uh, this should, 19,500 should provide a good support. And there is call writing at 19,800. 19900 20000 levels and they should provide resistance uh, in in the forthcoming week so uh, this week is going to be uh, a neutral kind of thing and as per as the momentum takes place or the world markets move the nifty should also move so i had also uh, clearly brought out that 19500 550 is a supply zone and 
it should be the nearest su uh, support zone if there is a pullback now because once we have crossed it uh, and we have gone above that now so if you see the put call ratio there is more call writing and there is less put writing so this is around 0.85 so it is reasonable right now <coughs> reliance uh, it made a low and then it has able it has been able to cross the 200 day uh, moving average and now it has gone above the 50 ema so this uh, 2330 odd level should be as a stop as a level to get in it and then one can go long so uh, it has moved along with the basic market thing and it is not looking to outperform or perform better than anybody else right now now nifty bank see, uh, it is a weekly chart so if you see here it had uh, two green weeks it took support at 50 ema and it had two green weeks but the latest uh, direction from rbi on lending issues and extra amount of money to be kept as uh, reserve has uh, again given a push back so the it corrected on friday so now it is below the 20 EMA on the weekly charts. So uh, around 43,000 level, if it is able to hold, then it should be okay. This is the uh, daily chart. It was expected to do better, uh, Nifty Bank, uh, as the rates were started going down and all. And it went up to around 44,500 uh, levels. But from there, uh, RBI came in and it led to most financials getting hit on Friday and with a big gap down. And now on our daily chart, the 200-day EMA is around uh, 43,300. Uh, so that level and 43,000 are the levels to see. Otherwise, the previous low of around 42,000 uh, is the next level to watch out for. But what RBI's move will do is that it may impact less capitalized banks and NBFCs and others should not get impacted much. So it's a good opportunity to buy the well-capitalized banks and NBFCs. Now the problem in uh, banks is HGFC Bank, though miraculously it held on Friday and that uh, held on to the Nifty Bank. But uh, it is still below the 200 day moving average and also the 50 moving average. So first it has to go above trade above these moving average to build some kind of a base and then one can look for uh, up move. But it is looking, it is still weak and uh, once the 50 EMA has gone below the 200 EMA, it becomes like a death cross. So uh, this stock is, will, is, remains weak now. ICICI Bank, uh, it is in a process of forming a inverted head and shoulder, which will lead to a change in uptrend. But again, uh, this latest thing, it fell below the its 200-day moving average. That is on 926 uh, on Friday. So if it, if, if it goes below this 926 level, then there would be a problem for uh, this stock and it will go and test the uh, 900 levels again. So one has to be careful with this. The PSU Bank uh, index, uh, it retraced and then recovered or, uh, from the 50% retracement zone and then it started moving up. But again, it has fallen in the last two, three days. And I'll show you the reason why the problem is. But this one is looking strong. The problem is uh, SBI. If you say SBI, it is making lower highs and lower uh, lows and now uh, on friday it has broken below the 200 day moving average of 571 and it is now trading below that so uh, it will again go down and take support at around 5 540 550 levels in case it gets some support but uh, the trend is weak but the uh, strength is in the smaller psu banks like canra bank it is trading clearly above the 20 EMA. It had a, a small amount of a breakout above 400 on, uh, I think, uh, this week. 
but subsequently it has corrected based on this negative news so let's see i think it should take support at around this 387 levels and then should move up from here <coughs> the public sector enterprises uh, is doing well and since march if you see it has constantly uh, rallied above the 20 ema and uh, in this dip in october it took support at 50 ema but it has bounced back and now it has broken out and it is at all time high and uh, all these public sector enterprises are doing well in all fields one of them is this pfc this is a chart of pfc if you see how beautiful it is from march onwards it has constantly gone down once in october it tested the uh, 50 ema and then it had a breakout near breakout after the results and now it has touched around 320 odd levels and it is, seems to be heading higher uh the last week the nifty it took support at on the weekly chart at 50 ema and then it has bounced back and has bounced back above the above the trend line the upper trend line from which uh, it was always facing facing resistance yeah. so let's see where it goes and this is basically related to uh, the 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 improvement in the us markets because this is a clear reflection of the it results are a clear reflection of the uh, state of us economy and with pcs buyback also uh, put it in Uh, so that was the one which led to both the move in infosys and tcs and hcl tech the mid cap index uh, it has has a continuous rise and now it has gone to its all time high on friday so balanced market uh, may be weak but this mid cap index is doing well and if you see it went below the 50 ema but now it has bounced back nicely and it should do well so all portfolio should do well similarly for the small cap index it made a top and now it has broken out above that so remain invested in good quality small caps and all that uh, another index which is doing well is reality now here again it took a uh, support at 50 ema real real estate index uh, on uh, october in october end october and then it has bounced back nicely after that in last two three weeks it has gone up to fresh high and it should continue to do well because there is so much of interest and good results from the real estate sector the other sector which is doing well is the consumption sector to see from march it has done well it took supports at around the 50 ema but it has now gone clearly above and 20 ema is above 50 ema so it is uh, it's in strength so again it is uh, doing well the constituents of the consumption index are here it has all kinds of uh, stocks hindustan liver asian paints apollo hospital which was doing well mahindra and mahindra tata consumer nokri britannia titan everything so this will continue to do well and uh, so this uh, basically in basically the uh, urban india uh, rich consumption story is likely to do well uh, one stock which i wanted to highlight has which has broken out now is tata power there was a declining trend line but it has broken out and it is now above the 50 ema and it is likely to head higher from here at least test the previous high of around 270 280 odd levels because there is so much of interest and they have a very good portfolio of uh, renewables and all those issues so uh, the few stocks i'll cover today i find kalyan jewelers to be very interesting i'll tell you why how what is the reason for their outperformance it continues to deliver revenue outperformance 32% year on year compared to peers 21% titan driven by franchise led retail expansion which is 31% year on year while same store sales growth performance was decent at 8% versus 22% for titan so what they have done is they have changed their business model i'll cover that which led to sharp improvement in roc and roe as per trailing 12 months by 210 basis point to 19% and 15% versus fi23 which offset the relative contraction in operating profit margin but improvement in roe roc helps improving the profits the 
gross and EBITDA margins were down 103 basis point and 71 basis point respectively due to accelerated store expansion through franchises which came at lower margins versus the Coco store. Coco is company owned company operated stores uh, while the other one which they are doing is now Coco which is franchise owned company operated. So Kalyan added 13 stores in second quarter FI24 all non, non sum So what they are doing is they are expanding towards uh, the rest of the country because earlier they were primarily South India based and which you can see from their ads also, right? Uh, other than Amitabh Bachchan and his family, rest of the people in those ads of theirs are all South based stars. It launched its first ever Foco store that is franchisee owned company operated store in Middle East while added one more Candare showroom during second quarter FY24. Candare is their online uh, uh, jewelry segment. So this is what they did. Now what has happened is, if you see, there is a 27% year on year improvement in revenues and uh, roughly the same as per uh, from Q1 also. And quarterly, uh, sorry, the half yearly revenues are up 21%. EBITDA, 20%. Profit, roughly up around 30%. Profit before tax and after tax. And though the margins have come up, come down, and I, as I showed you, the ROC, R, ROEs have improved. Now, what they have been able to do is by opening more stores which are franchise-owned, uh, and company operated, their revenue CAGR has improved. Earlier it was at a slow pace, but from FI23 onwards, they are growing at 25%. So if you see, the they are increasing their revenues, they are going for large scale revenues, and EBITDA margins have come down because one moment it is franchise owned, the margins reduced, but net profits have increased, EPS has improved. And EPS is improving roughly 25 to 30 percent year on year, and the P has come down. And if you see from here, the how much the ROC and return on equity, the return ratios, how much they are improved from single digit. Now they have gone into high double digits. So if you see, uh, they are expecting an EPS of around 7.5 uh, in uh, uh, FY25. And uh, net sales are likely to grow by around 20, 27 and 22%, 27% this year and 22% next year. EBITDA is likely to improve by around 18 to 20%. EPS is going to grow around 32%. So P is coming down to around 40 odd, which is very decent as compared to if you see the growth they are offering and the valuation of Titan. And uh, it's a relatively uh, good management. So there is no kind of corporate governance issue. So <coughs> gross profit margins though are declining because of the more business model and EBITDA margins and all that. And but uh, debt is likely to improve, uh, sorry, go bad now. Net debt to equity is expected to go up to around 5.2. But their uh, EBITDA is good. So net debt to EBITDA is around 20 times has been maintained. And uh, the, they are using this model to increase their stores and all that. So if you see the return ratios here, return ratios are constantly improving ROCE and ROE and this is what is leading to better EBITDA and better cash flow. So this is the uh, their stores. They used to be primarily based in South India and now they are expanding to the northern part of the country and to the eastern part and this is where they are expanding. Uh, they have showrooms in Middle East also. So the in South India presence is around 56% and 44% is non-South and they are they likely to increase. They are going into non-metros also. And so if you see the how the number of showrooms and retail spaces they are improved, even Candair they are improving. Uh, and they are spreading to various states and union territories of uh, India. Now see the uh, chart of Kalyan Jewelers. Uh, here if you see it was somewhere languishing around these levels 
and then once this improvement in revenue started it took off and now it has reached around that 317 318 level which is the uh, 200 day sorry 20 ema and uh, this is a stock to be bought on all dips because again it is a reflection of the urban india uh, consumption story so all these uh, stores which they are making in middle east and the candare format is roe accretive which will help in profit and higher share of non south revenue will also help them so they are they are guided that they will increase their stores to 60 plus in fy24 by 60 plus to fy24 so if you see their valuation fy25 expected eps is 7.5 at 40 to uh, 50 p even if you give them 50 p it should trade at around 370 to 375 so there is some uh, space to go it went there and it corrected from there so if it comes to the 50 ema falls to these 275 280 level this is the place to get in this kalyan jewelers for a long time now the other one which i find very interesting is uh is the power mech projects is a leading infrastructure construction company management is targeting top line of 5000 crore 6800 to 6900 crores and 9000 crores for fy24 fy25 and fy26 that means they are targeting nearly doubling of the revenue in the next 3 years so that is a level of growth they are targeting <coughs> on 31st july power mac won a 30000 crore odd mdo mdo is a uh, mine development and operational order contract from sale the management highlighted that the mdo order is executable over 28 years so that means there is a revenue visibility to fund the capex need bow uh, power mech has raised 350 crore by a qip at a floor price of rupees 3881.17 share on 23rd october so that is just uh, recently only and management expects the order wins in power sector on the back of capacity addition of 23.3 gigawatt for new projects and revival of old projects uh, operation and maintenance opportunities including comprehensive operation and maintenance contracts for rupees 229 crore non power sector raichur project 2 into 600 megawatt roughly 163 crore and adani project at mindra for 100 crore they have also identified opportunities at around 18000 crore with focus on sewage treatment plants urban renewal schemes water supply schemes lift irrigation schemes and canal work is currently executing 14 railway projects totaling 1500 crore they are doing road projects in telangana which are nearing completion and the company is executing remaining projects in mizoram and karnataka so if you see they are into all aspects of uh, infrastructure now if you see uh, their uh, uh, revenue uh, mostly the fourth quarter is the best one so if you see year on year <coughs> there is a 20% growth in revenue abita margins have also improved and abita is improved by 30% that means the margins are improving and profit has improved by 16 odd percent uh, from second quarter but what they are guiding for is roughly doubling of uh, uh, revenues for uh, in the fourth quarter from the uh, last year fourth quarter and uh, so they are guiding for fy24 as per their order book around 50000 crores of uh, uh, not sorry 50000 this is 5000 because this is in million so roughly uh, 5000 crores of sales in uh, fy24 so that will be an improvement of mm -hmm. around 37% over fy23 and <coughs> better margins and all and profit to improve and a uh, eps uh, this year of around 220 last year it was around 140 so if it is around 200 to 220 uh you can see uh, how much this stock should be valued so this is their uh, future guidance if you see uh, guiding for around 
9,000 crores of, this is in million, so 9,000 crores of revenue in FI26 and 7,000 7, crores of revenue in FI24 with improvement in margins to around 30% and EBITDA growth of roughly around 50 to 42% and a EPS of FI, uh, for FI25 they are targeting 374 and 558 in FI26. So this is what they are tar targeting. Now, as per that, at FI25 uh, EPS, they are roughly at around 10 P, so which is relatively cheap as compared to their peers. The return ratios are also expected to improve constantly and reach on to that high 30 percent. Uh, 30%. With profitability ratios also improving and margins improving, and their debt is under control. Uh, debt to equity is going to go down because uh, they did this QIP and all that and the cash flows is uh, under better control. So this is the uh, revenue trend if you see. Revenue is going up and year on year growth is now reached at 20% level. So at 20%, if 20% uh, is the growth in revenues, that means it should double it every uh, three, three and a half years. And the margins here, if you see the chart, it's roughly 28-29%. Uh, that is the gross margins and EBITDA and profit margins are also improving. Now this uh, stock, this is where they did this QIP. Right? So 27 July, they did this QIP. It went to around 5,000, but it has corrected from there and it went to 3,300 odd, and now it has gone up again from there. So, uh, the, so, uh, and it went to its 200 day moving average. So, uh, pretty volatile, but if they are able to constantly deliver as to what they are claiming, then uh, this stock should perform well because roughly this is at uh, FI25, which with the earnings are which are being discounted right now, this is at around 10 times. So, uh, 350, 370 EPS, uh, if you give it 12, 15 times, it should easily trade at 4,500 to 5,000. <coughs> and this uh, MDO order with sale is a 30 odd years order. So it should provide constant revenue uh, uh, over a period of time. Uh, and they are saying that they would do around 1,200 to 1,800 crore quarterly execution, which they are expecting. The last stock is uh, Sandhar Technologies. It has 37 manufacturing facilities across eight states in India, two manufacturing facilities in Spain and one manufacturing facility in Mexico. Q2 consolidated revenue grew 6.7% Q on Q to Rs. 884 crore led by strong growth in locking and aluminium die casting business. Abita margins expanded 38 basis points Q on Q to 9.2%. It's a very special speciality uh, business which these companies have of these die casting because they're making very uh, high quality aluminium which is used in all kinds of vehicles. This is an auto ancillary. EV sector is witnessing significant progress by the company which of offers three product lines including DC-DC converters, EV chargers and motor controllers. It has gone exclusive business from Japanese companies like Honda and Suzuki for smart, smart lock system which will be the growth driver. Smart, smart locks revenue is 4x more than regular manual locks. For H2 FI24, the company anticipates sustained growth led by strong growth in locking system, die casting and sheet metal business. Again, sheet metal is again a very, very niche business where you are making actually uh, thin films of uh, sheet which are very strong and which can resist high temperatures. Abita margins continue to improve due to softening commodity prices and cost control and ramp up in sheet metal business. Company will focus more on reducing debt going ahead in the back of strong cash flow generation and low capex requirement. And TVS is now the largest customer with 30%, Hero with 18%, JCB with 9% and Honda Motor and Scooter is around 3.5%. So if you see uh, year on year, they had uh, Got in the quarterly results, year on year, they had around 18% growth in revenues and the EBIT has gone up by around 52%.
profit has gone up by around 46 percent gross margins have improved by 307 percent and similarly EBITDA margins and net profit margins have also improved over a period of time and EBIT margins have also now improved this is their product wise revenue mix so if you see the product mix is good locking system vision systems sheet metal component assemblies cabins and fabricators aluminium die casting and aftermarket so the locking systems and aluminium die casting is the major part of their uh, business category wise uh, revenue mix if you see private personal vehicles is around 20 percent uh, of the of highway vehicles is around 15 percent CVs, commercial baggage, two percent, others five percent, and two wheelers is their major area where which is seeing the maximum growth is around fifty-eight percent. Uh, revenue is expected to grow around thirteen percent CAGR in next two three years. Avita is also going up now, going to double digit. Pack margins and uh, are going up to around 5% now. So that is improving. And ROE, ROCE is also now going into mid uh, double digits. So 14, 15%, which is uh, again good. So these are their uh, important ratios. So if you see gross profit margins are likely to remain steady over the next two, three years, around 38%. And profit margins are expected to improve to around 5% now and EBS is expected to go to around 28 to 30 over the next two years. Uh, they pay dividend, uh, have a dividend payout ratio around 24-25%. Uh, this you don't go by the CMP, the CMP has changed. So the market cap is roughly around 25,000, uh, sorry, 2,500 crore. This is in millions. And uh, the growth rate of revenues is uh, 10 to 7 percent, EBITDA around 17 odd percent, EPS growth rate is around 38 percent for FY25, and adjusted PAT is also likely to grow by 38 percent. So, it is a company which is doing well in a very niche segment. Honda, MC, Scooter, India, uh, Private Limited is one of their key customers. And they have set up a new plant in sheet metals. Uh, strong growth is due to revival in two-wheeler volumes and increase in content per vehicle in locks and mirror. Uh, the ADC business, that is aluminum die casting business, sheet metal business fabrication is uh, likely to do well. So if you see uh, this chart of this uh, stock, it rose from this 200 odd levels in March, April, and it went up, then it went to its 100 EMA, uh, took support at 370 odd, uh, that is the 100 EMA, and then it has now risen to 470. So one has to wait for uh, major dips, but this is a stock to be kept in uh, horizon uh, because uh, as the uh, like a smart lock, smart lock costs around four times more than a, a normal lock. So if uh, every vehicle starts having a smart lock, so their content per vehicle uh, improves. So this is where they are uh, facing better revenues and better profits. So I have finished. Uh, we'll take questions now.